And now I'd like to introduce online marketing specialist for social magnitude, Kelly Rocky. Kelly. Hello, guys. Um, thank you for having me here today. I am here to talk to you about social media strategy. And definitely feel free to load up the questions for me at the end as well. I'm excited to answer them. Um, so one of the biggest things that I hear from my clients, I work with a lot of small businesses and a lot of you know, uh, mom and pops up to larger brands and corporations. And what I hear a lot is that um, they have a hard time coming up with a social media strategy. They know it's important, but they don't know what kind of content they have to do, how to make it easy, how to keep it coming consistently month after month, and also run their own business in the process. So I put together this webinar to um, show you how to create a winning social media strategy that still gives you enough time to run your business. So a little bit about me. Um, I have been doing this a little while. Um, I started in graphics. I gra graduated in 99. Um, with graphic designs, I also worked in 3D animation. I actually quit my first job at an advertising agency because I was told that the internet would never go anywhere. And I figured that that company was probably going to be irrelevant very soon. So I always had a passion for it. Um, went into print, owning my own print, an online advertising agency, but then I switched straight over to um, only online marketing for my clients. I also have created well-known communities online. I moved here uh, to Las Vegas, fabulous Las Vegas, because my main client asked me to do so, and that was the Maloof family, and they asked me to come down and help them out with their projects. And this last year, I started working with all kinds of different fabulous companies. So let's get into what we could do with you. And I don't believe that we need to prove to anybody anymore that social media is important to your business. I mean, everybody's on it. 70, uh, sorry, that's another step, but, um, but just in case we do, um, here are some statistics on the social media networks. So 1.5 billion people are on Facebook now, and I'm sure your mom, your brother, your <laughs> kids, dog, and cousins, everybody's basically on there. Um, but the other numbers are impressive too. 1 billion on YouTube, 40 million Instagram, 320 million Twitter, 200 million Snapchat, 100 million Pinterest, and even 10 million on Periscope. So these are some big numbers. It's very obvious that it's ready to go. So how do you make this work for you? The most important questions that, that I get are, I mean, the, the typical who, what, when, where, why. Who is your target market? Where should your social presence be? What should you post? When should you post? How? And then, of course, in the end, is this working for you? So let's dig in. Knowing who is your target marker, market will answer where, you sh where your social presence should be. And any marketing strategist knows that you, you need to know who your exact target market is in any businesses that you're in. If you're, you know, if you're in your high-end construction and, you know, flooring or something like that, then you know that your ideal client is in with, within this, you know, um, demographic. It's usually, you know, the maybe it's the woman who makes the decisions. Maybe it's, you know, they have this specific income. So kind of knowing who exactly your target market is can answer where your social presence should be. Because each social platform has different demographics, just like, how it used to be, you know, where, what magazine would you put your ad in? Are you going to put, you know, an, an ad about, um, about dog care in, <laughs> you know, a, a business magazine? Probably, probably not the best market, you know, but you can kind of I put it down from that. But, of course, there's also the ability to take advantage of, of different aspects and try new things. And if you're individually passionate about a specific um, uh, medium, then you can also go, venture into that. But let's actually look at the demographics of the different social media networks. And by the way, I can send this presentation to anybody who needs it in case you want to look at these numbers in more detail. Um, this is 
I'm not going to go through every single one of these numbers here. But obviously you can see some of the really hard facts about the different networks. So 72% of all internet users have Facebook. And it's, that's a pretty amazing number if you, if you think about it. So the demographics are pretty large. They also, if you are in advertising on Facebook, have a ability to target down to exactly who you're looking for. So it's a really nice platform just for, for marketing in general. Um, I mean, Twitter, I, I want to point out the ones that ha kind of have the extreme uh, demographics for marketing. Pinterest is very well known as being a very women-driven network. It's very visual. It's very um, crafty and uh, you can see kind of the income levels are, you know, from 30 to 74,000 are, are the majority of the people there, um, educated. So that's kind of what you're dealing with with Pinterest. Uh, I want to go to the next slide. And this is probably obvious, is LinkedIn. Um, it, it tends to be people in their working years. They're more college educated, higher incomes. And then, you know, because Danica specifically talked to me about Snapchat, I had to put that in there. The, the statistics on it are a little hard, harder to find as is uh, Google Plus, but, um, you know, 18% of all Internet users have Snapchat now. It is more women-driven, and but you can see the age is really interesting. It's 71% of people on Snapchat are between 18 and 34. So it is a younger group. So if you have a brand strategy uh, that needs to be targeting a younger audience, then yeah, Snapchat is something definitely to entertain. All right. So for your specific business, go ahead and ask yourself, based on the social media platform demographics, which ones make the most sense to attack your target market? So now that you know who and where, what should you post? So there are three things to keep in mind. But by the way, I like cartoons a little bit. You'll, you'll see that. Three things to keep in mind when creating social content. So you want to be consistent. If you're not keeping up with your social profiles, there's a very good chance that there are people out there that don't think you are even in business. A lot of people now um, will go to social profiles and your social presence in order to make sure a company is still around and see what kind of personality is. And people are doing a lot more research now than they used to be. So um, you need to keep it consistent with you know, what's going on and the things around you and make sure people know that you're, you're there and you haven't disappeared. So with that, you do want to be prepared. You obviously, to, to stay consistent, you want to you know, keep the content coming and be prepared for what's coming next. And I do plan ahead. You need to plan ahead and, and be prepared for what is coming up. But at the same time, you also need to be ready for real-time opportunities. And I'm not sure if you've heard of David Meerman Scott, but he has a whole concept of newsjacking, where his whole strategy to marketing through social media is to very, keep keep on top of the trending topics and whatever is in his realm of experience and, and in his industry, he jumps on it while it's beginning to trend and he uh, works a marketing strategy through that. So that, his name is David Meerman Scott. If you want to go check out that strategy, it's, he's fantastic and it's a great, great read. So. For the prepared content, not the, not the real-time you know, newsjacking opportunities, I suggest to create content categories that are appealing to your target market. So what this is going to do is it's going to give you a basis that you can repeat over and over again for when you come up with, when you're laying out your social media strategy. And so you're not kind of always flying from the cusp. And this will give you a basis of where to go when you have these content categories you can easily put them into a timeline. So I'll show you a few ideas. So maybe, you know, if you guys get some good ideas, maybe you can uh, write them in and stuff and get some interaction going. Um, obviously offering trivia questions. Uh, the one on the left, this specific one, we link it into our customers, uh, one of the pages on their site, so they actually have to click through to the site in order to see the answer. It's been a great conversion piece. 
um, using quotes, either your own or others. The one in the middle is actually, um, she's actually a writer and therapist, and so she, she creates her own social media uh, quotes. Obviously, using client testimonials is fantastic, and it's always great to uh, put the, the Yelp or Google Plus or Google, uh, Google Places logo on there so people are also encouraged to return and go and leave a review on your site because there's a slim chance that you might feature them. Um, always take advantage of holidays that are coming up. Uh, photography always gets a lot of great um, engagement on it. I'm a big fan of humor and jokes, so always intertwining that. Obviously, relative articles are a great way to have engagement, featuring products that you have or um, videos are also another great way to do it. And by the way, if you haven't seen that Conan Becomes a Mary Kay Beauty Consultant, you have to because that is one of the funniest things that's online and I had to include it. Um, another thing that is very aggressive as far as social media is running contests on social media. So um, what you can do here is engage your clients and, or, sorry, engage your fans and what we do with our clients is we use some software that, um, that makes it so that they're actually building a database behind these social media contests. So they'll say, hey, enter to win these three, this book collection. So when somebody goes to enter one of these contests, they go on, they give their email address, and that gives them one entry. But if they want to have more options to get another entry, then they'll, you know, like, like the client on Facebook, or they'll follow them on Twitter, and they'll tweet out about it, or they will for a friend. So this is, if you run a contest online, it's one of the greatest ways, and it's so much fun to just raise engagement on all of your social media platforms, but also to collect um, your e emails from your email database to be able to market out to it. So the next one, I, I put down a few other um, ideas, obviously a few in there. <laughs> so after you have content categories, create a social calendar with it to organize your content. So if you think about it, uh, let's say you chose trivia as something that's going to go out every Wednesday. All of a sudden, this daunting task of, all right, I have to come up with content for an entire month has turned down to, okay, I've got you know, seven, seven uh, categories of content that I need to make, so I just need to make four pieces for each of those contents if I'm going to post like one of, these, one of these engaging pieces per day. So what that might look like on a calendar, let's say you bring it into Google Calendar. And, I, and obviously, you know, we, we'll get into posting multiple times, but I'm just saying it simplistically. Um, so if you bring it into here, it suddenly makes your social media strategy a lot easier. If you have a designer, you can say, hey, you know, we, we need four recipes this month, and, you know, because Thursdays are our recipe of the weekday. Um, and so all of a sudden, your social media calendar is starting to get full with awesome content, and it hasn't taken that much stress or time out of your life, and it's just a clear way to do it. So this is just a simple calendar on, on Google Calendar. Um, I have a, a more elaborate one as an example on here. If you, also, if you'd like this, um, I, do, I can send it to anybody if you guys want to email me, um, kelly at socialmagnitude.com. I can share, you, share with you this file. So this gets a little bit more um, detailed and intricate into multiple postings a day on each platform. Uh, I, I put some examples in there, you know, on Facebook, the morning posts and the evening posts, uh, uh, doing, you know, five posts a day on Twitter and, and Instagram, and, you know, so you can kind of see. And I also put uh, content ideas on the right of, of that sheet also, just to keep it, keep ideas fresh. So now that you know what you want to share, it's time for how. Um, so several of the social media platforms actually have their own scheduling options. Uh, if Facebook on their pages do right there the, uh, where it says the set time and, or date and time of your post. And then Twitter does on their, on their ads platform, you can actually do it from that. But what most people have 
picked up at this time is um, there's a lot of tools out there where you can schedule to multiple platforms at once. Hootsuite is uh, a fantastic one. I've, um, I've been a, you know, a certified user for a long time, and so I like them. Um, they're fantastic for multiple users and having a team uh, build you know, so social content together and getting approvals out. It's very, they have awesome apps that go into it that are great for listening to content that's online and that sort of thing. Sprout Social is a good tool, very similar to Hootsuite. They're known for their reporting, so there's good reporting in there. Buffer is a, is a fun tool because how that one works is that you can upload bulk content and it will schedule it out based on the performance of your each account. So let's say you have uh, 10 accounts on, or let's say that you have 10 posts that you want to share onto Facebook. It will bulk upload all 10 of those posts and schedule it out in the time frame that it, um, and sorry, in the time frame that works the best with your audience. And then we do have a social media control panel with our company, Social Magnitude. It, it is free to get a, a, an account on there. So, and the, the one thing that is, sets ours apart, we actually do use Buffer, so you can do the bulk upload, but um, using a visual composer, because images perform so much better than any other content that you post, um, we have an image composer on here so people, even without graphic skills, can go in, upload an image, apply a template to it, and create some great graphics um, and put it in their post. So it makes it very nice, you know, to just get the job done. <laughs> um, so with your content scheduled, you and your business are socially set. So this, what was the final question? Is this working? And the answer is to follow analytics to tell you how people are responding to your content. I am a huge analytics. I could probably look at analytics all day long. And this is where you know what you're doing is working or if it's not working. So let's look at a few different things here. Um, if people are unfollowing you, it might be a sign. I just put this little graph on there because was, there was a little dip. And it might be a sign that, hey, that, that account's sharing too often, or maybe was there some content in there that the audience wasn't really relating to, it wasn't really relevant, what's going on there. So it really gives you an idea of, of how things are going on the account. But at the same time, if your analytics are, are increasing in followers consistently and getting great engagement, then this is a sign that your fans are liking what you have to say and maybe it's time to increase your, your posting. So kind of watch how that's going and with everything that, that you do, I always have a strategy of, um, you know, create, review, refine, and then start all over again. So <laughs> uh, just consistently as you're putting things out, always analyze everything. Adjust it according to what you're finding, and then um, and then start it again. Um, analytics also can go through and tell you the best days and times post. This one, this analytics tool is specifically social report. That's what I use for to really get like deep numbers on everything um, because it goes into every platform at the same time. So. That's what you're seeing here. And, but you can also see the analytics through each individual um, social media uh, platform and tools like what we have on our uh, control panel. We do have statistics. Sprout Social is known for it. They, they have great statistics. And then Hootsuite for world, not the whole <laughs> So everybody asks me, you know, how, how often should I post? How much should I post? So I recommend doing one to two posts. This is the start when you don't have any analytics yet. Doing one to two posts on Facebook, Instagram, and Google Plus per day. Um, four to five on Twitter. Twitter has the ability to handle a lot more content than any of the other social platforms. And um, I don't know if it's an ADD uh, <laughs> audience on there, but it's kind of the information moves so fast and um, you, can, you can get away with doing a lot more. One post on LinkedIn and two to three posts on Pinterest per day. 
So now that I've answered those questions, let's get into the questions that you guys have for me. So again, if you want to ask a question, you can type it into the chat box in the bottom left corner of your screen. Um, they are all anonymous, so we're not going to say your name at all, and nobody else can see your questions, just in case that's a factor. Um, you can also press star 7 on your phone to unmute your line. Um, Kelly, do you want to go into just, just some of like the newer social media platforms, just like the Snapchats, the Snapchats and, and, and the Periscopes and kind of how they might be able to help help a business. Right, yeah. And um, like I said, there's, there's different audiences for each of those. And so what both Periscope and Snapchat have really done have taken the, the video aspect into, you know, doing it almost real time with, with your, your followers. So I guess in a, Snapchat is clearly winning the race on this. <laughs> so it's an awesome way to have a real-time connection with your customers. This is the content that only gets shared for 24 hours and then it disappears. And, but engaging a customer through video on this platform, you can um, ha you know, have more of a real-time connection with them and, and build a good audience to um, you know, that's all a lot younger, usually a little bit younger, but a lot more like ready to watch you. Because what happens is your video will turn off after 24 hours, so your fans tend to be a little bit more dedicated on on getting on there once a day in order to check out what you have going on. Yeah, yeah, request. Okay, you're right in. <laughs> and again, you said this is just for your first start. Right. To start it out, just start off with this and really watch the analytics of what's going on with each of these. Um, I have accounts that do get up to like five or six times a day on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you know, I know on Google Plus, I know it's in, like a really – weird thing, <laughs> but it's very much the overlooked, um, overlooked platform. But there is an opportunity for growth in there when it comes to the communities. And it's not, in certain industries, it's not, um, it's, I mean, it's definitely worth checking out the actual community because their communities on Google Plus are actually where there's any interaction. And so you can get in there and and let's say it's flowers. Um, gardening is a fantastic example. Um, their, their gardening com communities on Google Plus are constantly engaging. And so, because that was a hard one to beat. You know, it was kind of, you know, they came in, not, not you know, nothing was going on with this entire platform. And so, but what, what was happening is that these communities were forming and, and that's where all the engagement is. So it might look like nothing's happening, but if you start in engaging in a community, that's a, that's a whole different story. So again, do your research because it's, it's certain industries, extremely big in um, engineering. All right, well, if there are no more questions, uh, just a quick reminder that you can, um, you can, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you guys want a copy of this presentation or that um, the content calendar, the one that I have in the, in the spreadsheet where it goes into the, the multiple postings per day, just email me, kelly at socialmagnitude.com. And then um, my last one. Um, thank you to the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce members. Um, so I just wanted to thank you so much, Kelly, for, for hosting Chamber U today. Um, and thank you all so much for joining us. Just a quick reminder that our next Chamber University is next Friday at 10 a.m. And we are going to have Jennifer Taylor, who is the Executive Director of the Clean Energy Project, talking about how to green up your business. So, um, so once again, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you, Kelly, and we hope you have a wonderful Friday. Thank you.